O oh, the word of my Lord, deep within my being. O oh, the word of my Lord, you have filled my mind. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you through and through. I chose you to be mine. Before you left your mother's side, I called to you, my child, to be my sign. O oh, the word of my Lord, deep within my being. O oh, the word of my Lord, you have filled my mind. I know that you are very young, but I will make you strong. I'll fill you with my word. And you will travel through the land, fulfilling my command, which you have heard. O oh, the word of my Lord, deep within my being. O oh, the word of my Lord, you have filled my mind. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And good evening, everybody, and welcome from wherever you are to this, the third and the final session of our Lexio Divina. As you heard in the last two weeks, it was prepared initially um, as a, a prayer session for the Passionist Young team when tier four lockdown meant that they couldn't have their usual. Uh, week Wednesday evening gathering in the church, but since then it's extended beyond that. So my thanks to the to the young team and to uh, Father Gareth and Father Anthony for that widened invitation. As Father Anthony said last week, you have the old fellow this week, so I'm here with my two young and still maturing uh, colleagues. So I'll be leading you uh, tonight. We're in this season of Advent. Lexio Divina is a particular way of praying with God's words, letting it go deeper. And we're preparing in this season to celebrate the birth of Christ, who is the Word made flesh, the Word made flesh who comes to dwell among us. And so before we begin to, to ponder our scripture text for this evening, perhaps just to think of some of the ways in which the word of God describes itself. The letter to the Hebrews, the word of God is alive and active. Like a fine double-edged sword, it pierces us to the core, reveals ourselves to ourselves. The prophet Isaiah the word of God is like gentle rain that falls from heaven. And just as the rain does not fall to the earth and return without first watering the earth and causing what's in it to spring up and to grow. So the word of God does not fall into to hearts that welcome it without causing what's there to spring up and to grow as well. Or the letter of St. James, the word of God is like a mirror and we look in the mirror of God's word and we see not just who we are, but who we could be if we allowed ourselves to be formed by that word. And then, of course, the gospel of Matthew, that the word is like a farmer sowing seed and some of the seed falls on the path and is crushed underfoot. Some falls on the side of the path and doesn't take root. Some falls amongst thorns and is crushed but sometimes the seed falls into the good soil and produces a crop 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. So what way is the word of God going to, to come to us this evening when we take time, take time to really, to really ponder it? Just in case anybody is, is new to this, hasn't been here the last couple of weeks, we're going to read the scripture text three times First, Father Gareth, and Father Anthony, and then myself, and we'll pause in between each time just to let it sink in. And then the three of us here will 
um, perhaps share a word or a phrase that struck us. And we're asking you where you are to, to just see if any word or phrase strikes you. And then we'll share a little bit on why, why that particular word or phrase struck us. And you'll be thinking as well, you know, why did that particular word or phrase strike you? Next Sunday is the third Sunday of Advent, Gaudete Sunday. Gaudete means rejoice. It's the Sunday when we light the rose-coloured candle. And Father Garth can't wait to wear the rose-coloured vestments. Socks. <laughs> so the word, the scripture reading we're, we're choosing this evening is from uh, the second reading of uh, next Sunday, which is from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians that speaks about that rejoicing always being happy always. And just to lead us into that, um, we're going to just sing a little refrain, Rejoice in the Lord always. Some of you may know it as a round. Um, so for where you are at home, if you want to sing it as a round, sing it um, in that way. And we'll sing it maybe three or four times or as long as the Spirit wants us to sing it. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice, 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 and again I say rejoice, 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 and again I say rejoice, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. The scripture reading is First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 24. And Gareth will read it first. Be happy at all times, pray constantly, and for all things, give thanks to God, because this is what God expects you to do in Christ Jesus. Never try to suppress the spirit or treat the gift of prophecy with contempt. Think before you do anything. Hold on to what is good and avoid every form of evil. May the God of peace make you perfect and holy and may you all be kept safe and blameless, spirit, soul and body for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has called you and he will not fail you. We'll just sit with the text for a few quiet moments and perhaps this first time around maybe just to see if there is one word one word that strikes you and hold that word to your heart
I'll listen now to the text for a second time. Be happy at all times. Pray constantly. And for all things give thanks to God. Because this is what God expects you to do in Christ Jesus. Never try to suppress the spirit or treat the gift of prophecy with contempt. Think before you do anything. Hold on to what is good and avoid every form of evil. May the God of peace make you perfect and holy. And may you all be kept safe and blameless, spirit, soul, and body, for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has called you, and he will not fail you. And so we sit with the text for a second time, and perhaps this time is a phrase that strikes you and that you want to take into your heart like a seed. We listen for a third time. Be happy at all times. Pray constantly. And for all things, give thanks to God. Because this is what God expects you to do in Christ Jesus. Never try to suppress the spirit or treat the gift of prophecy with contempt. Think before you do anything. Hold on to what is good and avoid every form of evil. May the God of peace make you perfect and holy and may you all be kept safe and blameless, spirit, soul and body for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has called you and he will not fail you. So the invitation now is just where you are, <laughs> whether you're alone or whether you're with anybody else just to speak your word or your phrase or both out loud. If there's someone with you, you may want to, to share why, why you chose that word or phrase, why that struck you, or just speak it for yourself, say why, and we will be doing something of, of the same here. We'll let that run for a little while.
This is what God expects you to do. The gift of prophecy. May the God of peace make you perfect and holy. Blameless. Been a bit of a hectic day, and um, it was one of those days when I feel as if I'm uh, bowing <laughs> under expectations and um, trying to live up to so many expectations or demands. And then, of course, I realize that really that the expectations and the demands that they I put on myself and um, when I get disappointed at maybe not living up to expectations is, is disappointment in, in myself. And so I was struck just by, by that, you know, this is what God expects you to do. And I said, oh God, God's got expectations as well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> How do you live up to God's expectations? And I think that's you know, it just made me think of the importance of just taking time with a text because sometimes you see the wrong thing, you know. Uh, I read another translation of this earlier and it, and it was that this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. This is what God expects you to do in Christ Jesus. What does God expect me to do? What is the will of God for me? To be happy at all times. I never didn't go back to that bit. This is what God expects me to do in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus, there is a happiness, a joy that can't be found anywhere else. You know, this is God's will, that, that kind of happiness. And then, of course, the in Christ Jesus and not suppressing the spirit and the God who will not fail you. This kind of whole idea of, of this kind of indwelling of of the Holy Trinity and being held, being held in safety. Just, um, as I caught breath, as I kind of let the day settle a wee bit and coming in here and sitting with it a wee bit more, you know, just, it just changed, changed things. And that's what the Word of God can do, you know. Just kind of just, when you breathe, when you pause, you just see things in a different way. He says it all times as well, doesn't he? Eh? Mm -hmm. That's the thing, is, you know, the, you know, <laughs> at all times, you know, at all times. A lot of people say, gosh, you can't be happy all the time, especially now, in this, you know, time of trial and everything else, like, you know. But as you know, the will of God to, for us to know, like, he, he, he's got our backs, like, you know. I think, yeah, there's a strong sense of that. A strong sense of that. This is a gift of prophecy for me. It was, um, I, I'm, I'm strange. I, I, I never thought, you know, why that jumped out to me was because, you know, I, I, I your voice was saying about uh, the prophet Isaiah quite a lot. You were talking a lot about prophet Isaiah. 
and uh, prophecy is a, an Old Testament, you know, pointing to the coming to the, of the Lord, you know. Uh, and yet yeah, this is this is from the New Testament. This has struck me there that, uh, and St. Paul is saying, yeah, you now he's saying, don't try to suppress the Spirit or treat the gift of prophecy with contempt, you know. And he's saying, allow the Spirit to move, um, you know, welcome prophecies because, you know, like the prophets of the Old Testament are pointing to our Lord Jesus Christ and our Lord Jesus Christ has come, you know. He's come. But every prophet would start off by saying, the Lord says this, that says the Lord. And that, that needs to be said in every generation, you know, to remind us, like, the Lord has spoken through our Lord Jesus Christ. And, like, everything we face today, that says the Lord. Keep your faith. That says the Lord. You know, it gets us through the word of the Lord, Lord speaking. You know, he's alive and active. And he wants to speak to us. He wants to speak to us. And he wants to speak to us because he loves us so much and he doesn't want to leave us alone to face anything alone. So I've really got a strong sense of that in it. So, surprisingly, I didn't, yeah. The other translation I read didn't talk about the prophets much, but, but this, the gift of prophecy made me think of it differently because I was thinking back to my student days and used to go to this huge prayer meeting in yeah. Canada, you know. <laughs> Uh, and um, it was at a Quaker Hall, and there'd always be people getting up in the middle of the meeting and pr prophesying, you know. And then somebody else would go up and supposed to have the gift of interpreting the prophet, yeah. pro prophecy. And and uh, my first inclination used to always, you know, be oh, crackers, you know, another <laughs> another nutcase, you know. <laughs> and yet, and yet, not treating the gift of prophecy with contempt. But, that there are people. And here in our time, to have a gift of prophecy, of being able to look at a situation and speak God's word yeah. into it in a challenging way, and and at least to be an, an openness to that, you know, mm. and and um, yeah, yeah. just amazing to think of that, you know, because you know, like it's, it's God who wants to speak to us. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. You know, God desperately wants to to get through and say, listen, yeah. in the darkness, because that's what the prophet Isaiah did. Yeah. You know, it was the message of hope, as you boys were saying. The prophet of Jeremiah, with the fear of God in you, like, you know. But they, you know, they were all, they all had their, their uh, purpose, all those prophets. And, and today too, like, you know, to, to tell us, listen, listen, keep fighting, keep fighting a good fight. You know, because well, God's heard. Yeah, you say that Pope Francis is a prophet. Yeah. And yeah. I think yeah. that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. They certainly read the signs of the times, I think. And yeah. Yeah, I think what's, what struck me tonight was this, this line, May the God of peace make you perfect and holy. And all these other quotations suddenly, you know, the, from the Old Testament, Be holy for I am holy. Um, God said to the people of Israel but then I was also struck again when you mentioned Pope Francis <laughs> <laughs> because it was one of his one of his little letters one of his shorter letters <laughs> uh, rejoice and be glad funnily enough Gaudete uh, ed exultate I think it was um, and he speaks about this kind of Neo-Pelagianism, you know, sort of trying to become holy through my own efforts, through my my own work, through my own talents, through through this or that. Um, and Paul here is saying, no, let God make you perfect and holy. You know, that's, it's not, it's your task, yes, to, to cooperate. And I know this from my own life of, of trying to be this before God, trying to be someone before God, you know, and then, you know, God will love me even more sort of thing. But there's no, 
you know, God loved me into existence and loves me as I am. And it's that love that will make me holy if, if I'm open to receive it. If I'm open mm -hmm. to let that love of God really, really penetrate to the depths of my being, to accept it. You know, you know, God's offering it unconditionally. Can I accept this, this love unconditionally? You know, I'll, I'll, you know, sort out that sin first, Lord, and then I'll, you know, let you make me holy. No, no, let, let God work within me. And I know this is I, speaking to people as well. It's something that a lot of people struggle with as well. You know, that somehow I've got to get to this point on a moral journey before God will love me sort of, or before I can stand before God. <laughs> Whereas, no, 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 no. You know, God acts first. God's love comes first. God's love will transform and make me perfect and holy. Yeah. That's, that's what was striking me tonight. Yeah. I think I think that's why the word blameless struck me as well. Yeah. Because I thought, how could I be blameless? You know, yeah. even the good man said this seventy times a day. Right. In guilt was I conceived. I said, how can I be blameless? But it's only God that can do that. People sometimes say, oh, I'm not worthy to receive holy yeah. communion, or I'm not worthy. But you know, it's God makes us worthy. Yeah. God makes us blameless. It's, it's grace. Yeah. It's she grace. Yeah. You talk a lot about everybody about the, the Second Vatican Council, you know, the universal call to holiness. Mm. That's, that's uh, you know, everyone, everyone is included in this, in this, 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 this lovely relationship, you know. And uh, uh, do you know, do you know, I was, I was with that gift of prophecy there, and it was really, that was really strong in me. And then I heard you say, blameless. <laughs> and I said, I said do you know, that's the one. my mind, my mind, my mind, my mind sort of chipped. You know, it really sort of went down into me like that word. That's a strange thing. Probably because I got a lot of, a lot of thoughts. Like, but um, I, 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 I said, why was that then? Why was that? Why did that strike me so much? The way you it was, not when we read it, but when you said that word, so blameless. Like, and um do you know what? I tell you what it was. I, I, I recognised it. See, see, I had a funeral today. And you know what the funeral we say? That, uh, um, I know that my Redeemer mm -hmm. lives. And on that final day of days, his voice shall bid me rise again. An ending joy and ceasing praise. This hope I cherish in my heart. To stand on earth, my flesh restored. And I always say, not as a stranger before God, but as a friend. You know, and see, do you know? I, 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 I look back at the text when you said it, and I said, God, I said, I never saw that before. It's because it says, May the God of peace make you perfect and holy, may you be kept all kept safe and blameless, spirit and soul and body, for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it was like, you know, um, a real sense of God saying, Listen, when you stand before me at the end of time. You know, you won't be worried about your shame. You won't be ashamed. You'll be standing before me as a friend. So there was, it was that blameless and friend. Those two words went together for me in a way I'd, I'd never sort of encountered before. You know, experienced before. So well, thanks for thanks for saying <laughs> saying blameless. Yeah, blameless. That's a great thought, isn't it? That we don't have to. We stand before God as a as a friend, like, as a friend. We wouldn't have to worry about all those things on us, all that shame, all that guilt, all that sin. Like, yeah. Aye. Pope Francis, the, the first extent of the cyclical, the joy of the gospel. Oh, sorry, uh, the joy of the gospel, the joy of this word of God. The joy. Maybe just to, um, we'll take some more quiet moments before we enter into our period of, of adoration. Because um, we've done a lot of talking here, you know, just, you, you speak where you are, just share, share your thought, even though we can't hear, share your thoughts with the ether, 
Share the thought with God. Share the thought with yourself, with your own heart. We'll just take some quiet moments to let you do that. The word of God can go deeper yet, so we still continue to ponder it, but we'll do that in the presence of, of the Blessed Sacrament in, in Jesus and with Jesus. Son of God, come, yes. Lord Jesus, come yes. again. Come, Lord Jesus, come again. Lord and Savior, Son of God, come, Lord Jesus, Come again, come, Lord Jesus, come again. Prince of Peace, Son of God, come, Lord Jesus, come again. Come, Lord Jesus, come again. Bread of life, Son of God, come, Lord Jesus, come again. Come, Lord Jesus, come again. Jesus Christ, Son of God, come, Lord Jesus, Come again, come, Lord Jesus, come
Benedictus, qui in omine Domini, Benedictus, qui in omine Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in excelsis. Just to bring our time of prayer to an end, um, this first part of Advent, we're still um, looking towards the, the second coming of Christ coming in glory to, to firmly establish his kingdom. So I'll invite uh, Father Gareth to lead us in uh, the third mystery of light, the proclamation of God's kingdom. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, O Lord. Amen. So thank you for praying uh, with us this evening. As I said, this is the, the final of these uh, Lexium Divina sessions. But we're still going to gather at the same time next Wednesday. And that's the 16th of um, December. 16th of December is really the um, kind of the end of that first part of Advent when we begin to enter into a kind of novena of days towards the, the celebration of the birth of Christ. So we're going to have a Teze a prayer session next Wednesday at 7, and just with crazy chants and songs and scripture and Again, silence and reflection. So we hope that you, you'll be able to join us for that as well. And then on the following Tuesday, um, that would be the 22nd of December, just a few days before Christmas, we will uh, have a, a service of reconciliation and healing, just as we did last Easter and also during during Lent. So we'll remind you of that uh, next Wednesday. So once again, thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. O Lady, full of God's own grace, whose caring hands the child embraced, 
who listened to the Spirit's word, believed and trusted in the Lord. O virgin fair star of the sea, my dearest mother, pray for me. O virgin fair star of the sea, my dearest mother, pray for me. O lady who felt daily joy in caring for the holy boy, whose home was plain and short of wealth, yet was enriched by God's own breath. O virgin fair star of the sea, my dearest mother, pray for me. O virgin fair star of the sea, my dearest mother, pray for me.